1990s on the big island of Hawaii, there was a disaster brewing. Like many farmers, Rusty Perry's livelihood was based on the papaya, a sweet tasting fruit and one of Hawaii's most important crops. Then a lethal disease, the papaya ring spot virus, began decimating the plantations. We first found it in, uh, I think it was late 93, and by 94 it was starting to become a real problem, and by 95 we had lost most of our fields. We had uh, about 14 non-family employees. We went down to one. Dennis and Carol Gonzalez, two Hawaiian molecular biologists working at Cornell University, came to see the damage for themselves. It's going to be amazing. Look at that tree over there. Typical symptoms of papaya ring spot. These are the shoestring of the leaves over here. Then look at this ring spot here. This is the, why they call it papaya ring spot. Here. Boy, those trees are terrible. Yeah, uh, this farmer not going to make any money. Nothing seemed to stop the virus. Not physical barriers, not chemical pesticides. And most farmers were resigned that within a few years, the $45 million papaya industry would be gone forever. Back in New York State at Cornell University, Dennis and Carol Gonzalez searched for a solution. They wondered if the cutting-edge technology of genetic engineering might help. Genes are the chemical instructions in each cell that govern how plants and animals reproduce and grow. Gonzalez's colleagues had been manipulating them since the 70s. Many medicines, from insulin to AIDS drugs, were now genetically engineered. Perhaps, he thought, the same techniques could help plants as well. Even though plants don't have immune systems, Gonzalez thought it might be possible to protect them against a future infection. Among the many genes making up the ring spot virus, Gonzalez identified one that made a harmless protein in the virus's outer coat. If he could splice this gene into the papaya chromosome, making a transgenic papaya, then perhaps the papaya would be protected in effect, vaccinated against future infection. But how do you get genes into plants? Scientists at Cornell had invented a crude but effective way called the gene gun. The ammunition is genes. The target, a plant. The shot is propelled by compressed gas. Magnified many times, the process works like this. First, tens of thousands of copies of the desired viral gene are made. Next, they're mixed with tiny tungsten balls to which the genes stick. When the balls are fired, the genes are carried along into the leaf. As the balls pass through the plant, some of the genes get inserted into some of the cells. These transformed cells can be grown in culture to become new plants, transgenic plants. Consolvis grew hundreds of transgenic papaya plants in dishes and subjected them to chemical...